Amen. Amen. Well, would you consider yourself a wise person? A wise person. Or would you say, nah, I'm a little bit more on the foolish side. We're my wise people. This is so funny because you're like, is it a trick question? I would say very candidly, it just depends on the season and the circumstance. If I take you back to my childhood and specifically in middle school, where are my middle school people, man? Remember when you were in middle school? Not, I was not like you. It was interesting. I thought I was wise, but I was the biggest fool. My mom is on the third row laughing right now. Do you remember like when you're in middle school and you're like, I am so smart, my parents don't know anything. You guys remember that? It's like, now looking back, you're like, how was I so dumb? How was I a complete idiot? And then even today, as your pastor, I'm sorry to say, there's just some decisions that I make that are just completely foolish. And what I'm learning more and more is if I'm listening to Jesus's teachings and applying them, I'm wise. It just really doesn't matter what, what is going on in my life, what the circumstance is, whether it's my marriage, whether it's raising children, whether it's leading a team, a business, whether it's, uh, you, you name it, spending money. Every single decision, if I'm listening to the teachings of the Lord. That's why we're freaky about self-feeders because we want you to make wise decisions. But the minute that maybe I'm still reading the word or I'm still listening to it, but I'm not living it, oh man, that thing goes south so quick. Anybody with me at church today? So, so, so many of us probably we were like, yeah, we're both. We're wise sometimes. We're Foolish sometimes. The way to look at the Bible, it's God's written word. He's the creator of the universe. He, he wrote it down to reveal himself, and you see him all through the scriptures. But it also, it really, it's a life manual. It's a playbook. And so when we study it, it's like, man, we're so wise because the God who made us <laughs> gave it to us and was like, this is how it's gonna work the best. So when we go, all right, I'm not in junior high anymore. I'm maturing. Okay, the world doesn't revolve around me. It's not only about me. This is really God's world. He put me in it for a relationship with him. And he gave me the playbook that if I just listen to it and then live it out, I'm wise. It's so crazy. It's like parents, when you give your kids instructions, <laughs> Hey, you might want to do this. You might want to save money. You might want to spend less. You might, and you're like, yeah, whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. And how, how, where are my parents at, by the way? Just raise your hand, parents. Okay. Isn't it funny how <laughs> you were that kid and now you have those kids? And it doesn't matter how many times you try to tell them, most often they have to learn the hard way. Oh, my goodness. Why is that? And you'll see in our text today. He, Jesus says specifically, he said, he goes, um, he, he compares it, the wise and the foolish. He says the wise, those, those people are kind of like, they listen to my teaching and then they, they follow it. They're like people that build their house on rock. And when the storms come, torrents of rain and the chaos comes in your life, you're gonna be okay. Why? Because you read God's word and you actually did it, and you planted a firm foundation in your life. He said, tragically, though, there's going to be a whole lot of foolish people, too. Because I gave them free will, I gave them a choice to listen to me or not. <laughs> Anybody? Those seasons? He said, the foolish people are like those who build their house on the sand, and when... The storm comes. This hit me hard when I was studying it. It said, great will be the fall. Mighty will be the crash. I was like, oh my goodness, that's my life. That's so many of the lives I see of us humans. 
when I'm like, yeah, I got it, I got it, I'm good, I'm gonna do my own thing, and then I go through something rocky, a storm in my marriage, a storm in my business, and now I just see this complete collapse, this complete crash, and I'm like, how did that happen? Jesus told you. His concluding remarks in, I don't know why I'm so hype right now, I'm so sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, let me, let me relax a little bit, let me relax, let me just get into the darn text because I'm scaring people away, I'm sorry. I just get hype about this because this is reality. We, we're not in junior high anymore, people. We are grown adults. And the decisions we make will determine the trajectory of our life. We only got one life to live. We, it's not like I get a do-over. And I'm trying to help as many people as we can. We are trying to help as many people as we can avoid the crash. Why, you don't have to. You don't have to. You can thrive in life. So let's, I'm sorry, okay. I need a stool or something. I just need to sit down. Y'all are like, can you just teach the Bible? I get that all the time. All right. Matthew 7, verse 24. Let's read the text. Anyone? Matthew 7, verse 24. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, that's key, can't just listen, follows it, is what? What are they, church? Wise. Wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Verse 23, though the rains come in torrents, <laughs> or the snow comes <laughs> in inches, and the floodwaters rise, and the winds beat against that house, Check this out. It won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. Anybody grateful for a firm foundation in the word of God? You know, there's some of you that have been raised in the word of God. Like, you don't know the grace of God in your life. You're standing on scripture that is solid. It never changes. It's the key to life. It's never gonna move. But, uh-oh, but, everybody say but. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it. See, listen, there's so many people that go to churches and raised in great homes. They listen, they hear it. I should say hear it. They hear it, but check it out. But, and doesn't obey it is foolish. There it is, foolish. Everybody just take your fingers, put your tears. We're all, we all been there, okay? <laughs> Y'all been there? Anybody been there? The person who builds a house on sand when, and I underline that in my Bible, it's not if the floods come, when the floods come, when the rain and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash, bang, boom. The New King James, great was its fall. The fall is always connected to a faulty foundation. So wouldn't it be good for us to consider and ask the question, how's your foundation right now? How's my foundation? Let me ask you this, is it firm or is it flimsy? When things go on in your life, it says that, it says that those who listen, and I, I was thinking about this, who are we listening to right now? Who, who are we following? It's interesting in social media, how many in social media, by the way? Just raise your hand. No, no shame, no blame. Okay, you, you, okay, you listen, whatever, okay. <laughs> I was thinking of this. Back in the day, they had like one newspaper. So one, per, like, you got the news from one. I was, I was just thinking, we can listen and follow anyone at any time in any voice we can allow in our ear. The, the multiplication effect of the variety of voices that are happening in our world right now blows my mind. Spiritually, financially, politically, physically, all over the place. I'm wondering if I kind of got, I got your login and your password for your social media. I wonder who you'd be following. I'd, I'd be interested to see who are you listening to? Because we say this all the time. Whoever is in your ear is going to steer. Who's in our ear? 
Well, we have a pastor on our staff, on our team, one of my, one of my great friends. We just celebrated. Can I say, I don't know if I can say this publicly. Is this okay? I probably should ask you before, not real time, but <laughs> we, uh, we just had an awesome party recently because God's just given him this crazy platform of a million plus followers on this, this social media platform. And I was like, this is clearly what God wants to do. What is he wanting to do? He's wanting to firm up foundations all throughout the entire world because this man is diligent and disciplined enough to take what's going on in the world, like the local newspaper, and he compares it with the word of God. And he's like, let me help you make a firm decision and a wise decision according, not to Cap's word, but to God's word. That to me is game changer right there. Who are you listening to? You're like, why, why is my life going down the, t why? Because we're listening to all kinds of crap. I don't know why I just, that wasn't in my notes. Can I <laughs> stick to my notes here? No, what I meant to say was this. It's because when storms come, what happens? What happens to our life? Is it cemented, it's solid, it's good, or does it collapse? Speaking of, speaking of storms, did you guys get the, like the, the alert text to your phone this week? Did, <laughs> did you get this? I was like, are we in Colorado or like, where are we? I, snow squall warning. Eh, eh, it's like going on your phone. I was like, ah, ah. What if you're in the middle of a, like an important meeting and all of a sudden your phone goes, eh. Slow down, delay travel. But this, this hit me when I read it. Look, look what it says. Be ready. Oh, golly, this is a word right now. Be ready for a what? Oh, my. A you mean that the storms in our life as humans don't just kind of like, hey, by the way, <laughs> things are about to go really south now. Your spouse is about to lose their mind in a weak moment. It's coming down the pike. No, it's when you get the call like, done. We are done. Or you get a diagnosis and you're like, where did that come from? What happened? It was sudden. It was a snow squall that was sudden. And now I'm going, what do I do in life? This is bigger, see, this, this teaching might not be for you, and maybe you're listening online, just write it in the chat, just, just write sudden, because that, that, that's what happens sometimes. Right now, your life's steady. There's, bank, there's money in the bank account. You, your relationship, like, you're two years in your marriage and there's no problems at all. You have no kids, you can sleep in. <laughs> Holler at your boy. It's one of the things that's good about being an empty nester, by the way. But there might come a day when things go haywire. I met my friends. There, there they are. I just, I met some friends. They've been here for a couple years at the church. You go through trials. You're, you're developing a solid foundation in the word of God, though, for the storm. Because when it comes suddenly, how do we navigate through life? Where do we go? What do we do? And if we're not prepared, man, it just, it just drills us. Doesn't it? Mighty crash. Let me give you some good news, by the way. If you're in the crash right now, it might be the only reason you're here is because you went through a crash. Can I tell you, God's so good, he'll even allow the crash to bring you back to him <laughs> and not shame you in the process. You know, you know those, those preachers that go, yeah, man, you should have listened to the word, man. I should have told you. you should. Zero of that. When you come back to the Lord, the Lord's like, I've been waiting for you. It's like the prodigal son. He's like, hey, I've just been waiting for you to come back. Huh. Isn't that good news? That's our father. He's so gracious. And I look at why most marriages crash. We're, I don't know why marriage is on my mind so much. Maybe because Denise and I are 23 years in and we're not perfect. We go, man, we're moving. Pray for us. Lay, lay a hand on us right now. 
Y'all remember when you moved, like you were the perfect Christian, all of a sudden you didn't eat all day and it was like 9.30 at night and you had that last box and it was negative 25. Y'all remember that? And then all of a sudden you're like, am I a pastor anymore here? <laughs> Mighty crash. <laughs> That's what happens sometimes, doesn't it? You, you're, you're in the middle of a, of a storm in your marriage and if we don't have it solidified where we go to in those times, then what, what, what do we do? That's why we're so committed, I think, at this church to helping you firm up your foundation daily in your own Bible. I don't want you just to get a regurgitated message 1.6 times a month never connect with God throughout the rest of the week and then somehow try to figure out how it's gonna work in your deepest storms. But when you're taking the initiative on your own to get to know God one day at a time in your own Bible, the scriptures become such a solid foundation that when the marriage does go crazy, when you do lose a child, when you do walk through the deepest, darkest storm and the snow squall comes out of nowhere, you have a solid foundation. Now, I wanna shift in this message because I, I'll be really honest, I wanted to preach four different messages, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you four different messages. I was like, all right, Lord, what do you want to say? He's like, just teach my Bible and then let the Spirit do the work. All right. So I pictured Jesus like, I don't know, it's playoff time in the NFL, so I just picture Jesus um, as the coach at the pregame pre huddle in the locker room. So I just picture Jesus, he wants to give us like, like a locker room talk here, the Sermon on the Mount, and he wants to talk about judging. That's one of them. And uh, all my phenomenal consultants that are here, we're my consultants, by the way. Can we, let's start there. You have an amazing gift, but with it comes a backside weakness. And so let's go back to the beginning of the chapter, shall we? <laughs> Matthew 7, verse 1. This is so fun. Isn't this fun? Bible can be fun. Church, church you can have, actually have a good time at church. I didn't know that. Matthew 7, verse 1. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. You will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Everybody know what a boomerang is? You know what that is? I heard it, I was walking by a guy the other day, he said, what comes around, goes around. He, and I knew what he was talking about. Yeah, that guy is such a jerk to everybody. Now he's getting his fill. You know, I was like, ah, okay, well, let's pray for grace for that guy right there. But I was thinking about, though, I want mercy for me when I, when I do something dumb in my weak human state. But when someone else does it, I want justice for them. And I just gotta be honest with this church, if we're not careful, we become the judgy church. That God, we got everything figured out. We read our Bible every day. Not like the church down the street. Y'all are idiots, you don't read your Bibles. You come in there, we, we, listen now, we gotta be real, real, real careful. Because the judgment that we have, it's gonna come right back at us. The vibe that we give off, it's gonna come it's come, it's come back. There was a guy named Adonai Bezik in Judges 1. You remember when the Israelites were first taking the land, they, they, God gave them power to wipe out some of these Canaanites. There was a king, Adonai Bezik, and the dude bounced. He like escaped. A bunch of his people got killed. They tracked him down. They finally, they finally captured him. Did they have it up? Yeah, what, listen to this. And, and so after they capture the king, they cut his thumbs off and his big toes. Snap. Why did they do that? Thump. You think the dude's gonna carry a sword anymore? And the big toes. So his dexterity and his balance, he was useless now in war. 
So listen, I once had 70 kings. Did you know he conquered 70 kings? He did the same darn thing, cut their, their toes off and their thumbs off, and, and they ate scraps under his table. Now look at that. God has paid me back for what I did to them. And I was like, okay, the people that love church, they get a little judgy, but they're not cutting off toes and thumbs. But I'm just gonna tell you, I don't know what it is right now that we do. If we raise our voice, if we have a certain look, if we're a little, you know, too quick to go in and, you know, the first thing you get to a restaurant, yeah, that, well, that's out of order. That, that little light is off. And I, if you're okay with someone looking at you or me and our life and doing the same thing, go on, brother. But if you're like, you know, I'd rather have someone just give me the benefit of the doubt. Who wants this to be, you want the benefit of the doubt. I just, I had a bad hair day. That's what I want. I want you to look at me like, ah, yeah, the guy. I know Todd, that's not Todd. That's, he's a little off right now. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. As opposed to. <laughs> that, as long as you're okay with someone doing that to you. <laughs> he goes on, look, look at this. Matthew 7, 3. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own how can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own? Hypocrite. Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then, this is interesting. Then you'll actually see well enough to deal, and I, I put my notes, to help with the speck in your friend's eye. You see, it's not condemnation, it's restoration. Those are two different things. See, the word for judge in, in the Greek is actually krino, and it actually is a judgmental term, like a judge is giving a final sentence. So we are to judge, but not condemn. Right there, it's like, yo, I gotta deal with my own. This was so funny. Can I share the story? I gotta, sh I gotta share this. So is that okay? This is the second real time I forgot to ask you about. <laughs> She'll love it. It was so funny because we, we we had a packed day and we were trying to get to a, a party and then we had a lunch or dinner meeting or whatever and we're calling the restaurant and it's in the car. You know when you put it on in the car? And, and, and you know how good restaurants or good businesses, they'll have like three or four different menu options, like touch one to get to this person and touch two. And they actually, they're good menu options. You know what I'm talking about? This one had like one option and it was not even close to what we needed. And it was funny because like, I, what was the exact phrase? I, do you remember the phrase? It was like, well, let's not do that. Like at our church, like it would be the worst. Like if we did kind of like that. So the very next day, it was so funny. I'm like, I'm like, I'm teaching on that. You just gave me amazing ammo right there. Like, and we just started dying laughing because we're all in process. And the next day, I'm studying and I call her, my loved one, and the voicemail <laughs> said, hi, this is so-and-so. I'm on sabbatical. I'll be back July 31st. And I was like, oh, that's too funny. <laughs> the person that was just dogging on the restaurant hasn't changed her own voice message. I was like, oh my goodness, that is too good. I got to insert that right there. <laughs> and now when she gets the mic, I'm sure she'll throw me under the bus. We're all in it, aren't we? I'm telling half the story. There's a whole lot to, to give her. Now, this is cool. This is going to play into it. No, this is going to play into my, my whole point. She's been trying to change that for a long time, but the, the phone company, is, it's broken. It she hasn't been able to do it. How much cooler is this? Sometimes we don't have all the information when we make a judgment. I heard a story about a guy. He, uh, he was getting on this Greyhound bus, and he had a couple kids. And they were like, you know, four, five, six, whatever. And he gets on the bus, and 
it's like a long, long bus ride. And as the kids are boarding, they're just rowdy and chaotic and nuts. And the, the guy kind of sits, you know, when you kind of are at, you know, in a bus and you kind of put your head kind of on the front. And this guy with these kids, he's not even really paying attention to the kids. He's kind of like putting his head on there. And there was a lady that was kind of like getting perturbed. Like, what kind of dad are you? Like, get your kids in control, man. And the dude picks up his head and he sensed, you know how you can sense when people are judging you, by the way? He, he sensed it and he said, oh man, I'm so sorry. We just buried their mother. She passed away. And I'm just really struggling right now. I'm so sorry. I wish, wouldn't that change you a little bit? What was the problem? It was condemnation without enough information. I don't think Jesus is saying don't make a, a good evaluation. Later on, he actually says, um, beware of false prophets. Well, how are you gonna know if they're a false prophet or not if you don't actually have some type of discernment and critical evaluation of what's happening from their life? So I don't think that, I think it's condemnation is the problem. And so we gotta, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta grow in this. Last thing I would say, if you're a business person and you're about to go acquire another business, what do you do? You get, you get all the financials, the P&L, balance sheet, you look at cash flows. Like you're not gonna go invest in a business without being very, very stringent on kind of what you're trying to understand, right? Nothing wrong with judgment. Condemnation, I think, is the problem. Okay, there's so much more to that, but let's go to number two because I'm running out of time. How about number two? Write it down. The golden rule. Y'all like the golden rule? Matthew 7, 12. Matthew 7, 12. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This, this hit me, this next sentence. Listen to what it says. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. So think about that. We just went through the whole Old Testament. If, if we just lived out the golden rule, we could just skip the Old Testament. Isn't that a wild thing? It's all culminated. And by the way, then Jesus says in Matthew 22, what does he say? He says, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and then love people as yourself. In this hangs all the law and prophets. So these are connected. The golden rule and love church, love God, love people, it's all connected. Why? Because if we're doing that, guess what? All the other details are taken care of. That's so powerful. So the question I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, two, twofold. One, how do you like to be treated? I don't know, I keep on going back to marriage. I don't know, maybe I'm prepping y'all junior high girls when you get married, I don't know. One of the things that we have a rule in our marriage, it's a very simple one, and I don't, this might help you. It's mandatory please and thank you. What is that? Simple, basic human politeness. Hey, sweetheart, can you please turn off the light? Turn off the light. How do you like to be talked to? When you talk to your children. Son. It was mandatory. Hey, Blaze, hey, Zion, could you please take out the trash? What was that? Rephrase. Oh, yeah, that's really good. If they were saying something, asking a request, We'll say, can you say that? Can you rephrase that? Can you say that again, please? So it was a non-negotiable. Why is that so practical but so simple? And, and some of you guys are like, that's dumb. And here's why. It's the golden rule. Don't you like, when Brian, when someone comes to you and says, hey, hey, Brian, could, could you please do this compared to, hey, buddy, do it or beat it? I'm telling you, man, something simple like that changes the game. We were at a Within Reach conference with over 500 leaders. By the way, shout out to Within Reach. 
us as one big church in this city, no longer boxing each other out for bodies and bucks, but locking arms to reach and disciple the lost and hurting in our city. It's beautiful what he's doing. And this preacher came in and he was saying, at our church, we just, we had, we had two things every week. Two, two mandatory things. And it was fabulous. I, I'm trying to figure out a way we can do it. He said, your, your uh, mandate as a church, all of us together, bless three people each week and eat with three different people every week. How about that? I was like, dang, you're making the Bible so practical. How about that? How about, how about we'll just do it one week? Y'all ready? <laughs> Live out the golden rule. Imagine if you just get like a gift card to, you know, what's your favorite restaurant? Yeah, yeah, just. That's yours, but what's yours? <laughs> you're, you're, I, you're being a good. Chick, so the holy bird, right? So someone comes to you and is like, yo, like waffle fries, malt, you know. Type it in the chat right now. Come on, where my Chick-fil-A people? Type in your favorite restaurant. All right, type it in. That's the golden chicken, that's a golden sandwich right there, golden fries, hot, all kinds of salt in them. But imagine, like, can you imagine if, well, how about this? What if the whole world lived like that? By the way, did you know Jesus was the only one that said that in the positive way? You know, Confucius, I think all, a bunch of other, you know, religious leaders, they said the opposite. Did you know that? Don't do to others what you don't want people to do to you. That's why I love Jesus. Jesus, he's like, no, no, we're not getting negative, man. We're staying positive. Oh, I love that. Now go do it to someone else. Go bless someone else. And by the way, when you're, when you're giving, you're actually living. You, you'll, you'll be alive in it. My mom, uh, I had a trouble with, I forget what grade it was. I think it was fifth grade. And there was a teacher that most teachers I, like, I had a good vibe with, she just didn't like me. You're like, I can see why, okay, <laughs> okay. All right, guys, easy. And what did you, she, told, she said, go, go kill her with kindness. And I'm telling you, it was the best, best word of advice ever. The rest of that semester, I'm like, how can I go above and beyond to bless this teacher? By the end of the semester, we were homies. We were best friends. So maybe that's a word for you guys. You got a teacher that doesn't vibe with you? Bless them. Or you have friends that are bullying you because you're a Christian? Bless them. Don't run from them. Bless them. Craig Rochelle says this, if you think it, say it. It could be a verbal blessing. I trained my mom in this recently. She's gone wild. It's like church lady gone wild, basically. It's... Uh, the, the audio text, a lot of times, God will put someone on my heart. If you think it and it's from God, say it. And so I'll just, I'll pull over or whatever and I'll just pray for someone. I'll encourage someone. J, JT, he's here. JT was on my mind the last two days and I just, I'm like, yo, I just wanna pray for you, man. You're my, you're my homie. If you think it, say it. Be a blessing. Okay, last one and we'll land the plane. Um, Matthew 7, 13 and 14. This is turbo round because I have negative 126 left. Here we go. It's Matthew 7, 13, 14. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. What a shocking comment by Jesus, God in human flesh. I've given humanity the free will choice to follow me, implement my teachings, or do their own thing. That is shocking. What's more shocking is he says, because of that, can you imagine the heartbreak in his heart? Because of that choice, the vast majority of humanity will not follow me, and they'll actually lead their own life disconnected from me forever in a place called hell. That is shocking and crazy to think. The highway to hell is broad. Its gate is wide for the many who choose that way because it's easy. But the gateway to life is very narrow. The road is difficult and there are only a few who find it. 
So when I was reading this and I was studying this, those are the three things I just wanted to land on. Very narrow, very, very narrow. Listen, some people might call you narrow, and I would just say, I'm just trying to stay in the boundaries that God has created that are gonna bless me the most. Those boundaries are not restrictive, they're protective. It's a narrow road. I'm gonna do my own thing. You can. You wanna stay on the road, it's narrow. Number two, it's difficult. True, surrendered, biblical Christianity is not easy. It's difficult. You wanna get in shape physically? It's difficult. Huh, anybody? You started in January, like, I'm gonna get in shape. It's like three weeks, how old are we in? Three weeks in, are you still there? No, see, see what I mean? It's difficult. Spiritual fitness is difficult. It's not easy. It's only, it's difficult. By the way, all right, I'm just gonna go to number three. Few, only a few find it. I've been hearing this a lot, um, especially amongst the youth and young adult, that being a Christian, a born-again Christian, in this world is super lonely. And I wish I had something better news for you, but can I tell you? Jesus just said there's only a few that can find it. It's lonely. And what's happening right now in your life is this. You're gonna have an opportunity to grow in your identity in Christ and solidify that all I need is Jesus or you're gonna try to fit in and kind of go away from the narrow path, but with it is gonna come what? A mighty crash. (laughs) Only a few. I remember going into locker rooms for years where I was the only Christian in the entire locker room. Sometimes I'd have one, one homie, maybe two. Two was like tops. And I had one choice or the other. Do I go in? love these guys right where they're at, zero judgment, pick up tape, encourage them, or do I just go into their world, go back? My prayer, friends, is that we would walk the narrow road. Only, only two, only two roads. I'll finish with this, this text here, and then I really, I'm way over time, so, but you need to see this. One of my favorite texts in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Listen to this. Today I've given you the choice between life and death, blessing and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Listen, you have the choice. I have the choice. And then this is the, this is the heart of God. Listen to this. Oh, that you would choose life. Oh my goodness, type it in the chat. Type life right now. Oh, that I would choose life. Do you see his heart? so that you, watch this, and your descendants might live. It's not just about you. It's about those that are coming after you. You and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, listen to Jesus' teachings, and obeying them, and committing yourself firmly to him. Check it out. This is the key to your life. Lord, thank you for this message and your word. Thank you, God, that you didn't leave us blind, that Jesus, you walked to this planet, you taught us how life is gonna work, you modeled it, you're so gracious, and even now, you are on a wild mission in a dark world to bring the light. And I pray, God, that even today, that foundations were just firmed up a little bit. And those foundations that are flimsy right now, God, that you would do something powerful. You would allow people to make a decision to stand on the rock. For your glory in Jesus' name.